that the government claims that it has a question of uh, 250 billion rupees from somewhere and of late this month there, there was a, some spike of 2 billion rupees over the estimation or even the target. Let us uh, take an expert opinion on that. What is this and how go government is going to manage and how this relief is going to translate into productivity at the human level. Dr. Vakar, very warm welcome. What do you say on that? Thank you, Tahir Sahib. I think you have rightly said that uh, while, of course, Prime Minister is keen to ease the pressure on the poorest of the poor uh, segment of the population, uh, but uh, the million dollar question is where will the money come from? That is one. Second question is what happens with the fund program? Because we have a commitment with the National Monetary Fund. And of course, this also means that we have a commitment with other multilateral donors who actually look towards IMF's consent to give support to Pakistan. And then the third big question is around the timing. That why now? Uh, and what has prompted uh, the Prime Minister to make this announcement now? Because had it been in, let's say, the, 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 during the recurrent waves of COVID that uh, we have seen or we continue to see, it would have made sense. But now that the econo economy is opening up, the supply capacities are also sort of uh, uh, increasing or expanding, uh, which would easily, uh, at least theoretically, would accommodate some of the pressures, inflationary pressures. Uh, then why now? You know, that, that is the, 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 the timing question that, that of course, uh, uh, one could, in an independent opinion, ask for. But all in all, I think your uh, first question is, of course, uh, the, the, the first point that you made is, of course, important that as the world now braces a very uncertain energy market, and there are several countries that are now, in fact, resorting to rationing of uh, fuel and oil supplies, you know, uh, uh, would Pakistan be able to take measures which allow for uh, reduced prices, which in turn could easily enhance the demand, domestic demand uh, for uh, power, for oil, uh, and can we then sustain that large domestic demand? So this is, of course, a question that comes to mind. Uh, of course, a supplementary question is that where will this package be accommodated from? Uh, therein, of course, we are looking at uh, the FBR, of course, which has uh, uh, gone past its revenue target uh, this quarter. But there are, of course, other instruments as well, which we have seen in this government and the past government as well, such as temporary curtailment of refunds, uh, which, of course, many of the past governments have also resorted to. Uh, cut in development spending, uh, again, uh, something which... Uh, was on the card even during the sixth review uh, as well. Uh, so, of course, uh, the, 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 the sum, of course, is not as large uh, as one would think that it cannot be accommodated uh, in the medium to longer term. Uh, but then, of course, there are going to be uh, second and third round impacts, which are difficult to predict uh, under the global economic milieu that we are seeing currently. The prices jumped from 80 to 9500 and now it is moving above 100. And I just checked, there was instead of going down, still the spike continues. I don't know what is the pace, but it continues. What do you think that if the price is brunt or gas is, if it is pegged like from, I mean, the via Japan cocktail or other instruments, it is pegged to the oil, we all know that. If that goes to 120, do you think still it would be sustainable? Because the Prime Minister has said, that till June now that would continue? Yes, I mean, theoretically speaking, Tahir Sahib, it is still not sustainable because sustainability would actually mean that my Genco's, my Disco's, my gas sector is able to recover full economic cost of their 
uh, generation, distribution, but and they were transmission. Not yeah, so even so before that, even because before of the energy that, line absolutely. losses and other, the circular debt. Absolutely. So, so, so sustainability it is. It should just add to it. That's right. So, sustainability is not even uh, a goal at this point, you know, uh, unfortunately. And but productivity is. Do you think it will add to productivity? Uh, short term. In the short term, it could relieve some pressures on industry uh, and but if one uh, expects that this industry would be able to lend you gains in terms of growth and revenues for the government that is a very uncertain uh, or, or difficult difficult to predict you know given the kind of economic environment there is your question about oil touching new highs is also important because uh, now we have seen that uh, there are two scenarios. One is that economies like U.S. accommodate uh, this, this sort of demand to increase their uh, supplies. OPEC Plus is also meeting to increase their supplies and they do it. That is one scenario. The other is that they don't accommodate that they don't have an agreement or the U.S. doesn't come forward to accommodate, you know. In the second scenarios, countries such as Pakistan uh, stand to really, uh, uh, I mean, we would be at a real disadvantage, especially if we have announced a package that we will accommodate the higher prices, but the supply is not there. Uh, that would sort, sort of come at a disadvantage. The disadvantage could be of the scale where we put it to some, I mean, to, we can be comparable to some percentage of growth or fiscal deficit, 1%, half a percent. I mean, quantum can be this big, do you think? Yes, and, and uh, I, I, I think uh, in terms of the quantum, of course, we won't be, uh, you're not expecting uh, an above 5% growth rate for the next year. That's for sure, yeah, you yeah, know. Uh, if if uh, the kind of... Or rather uh, four and a half. Yeah, if the kind of numbers that... that, that uh, uh, Shaukat Tareen, you remember, he said that, that we mess up or we pile up 16% growth, dividing by four, it is 4%. And when we go above four and a half percent, we heat up. So even the policy is to curtail it below 5%. No, that's right. That's right. And uh, some elements of heating up can be seen even this month uh, with the ballooning of current account deficit, you know, uh, much above the January level, for example, uh, and over $2 billion, you know. Uh, anything worth that amount uh, rings uh, alarm bells for the central bank, uh, yeah, yeah. which which it is, of yeah. course, doing. And the pressure on the rupee is not just on from the overheating side, of course. The pressure on the rupee is also from where you refer to the, un the, the global uncertainty about oil, but also other commodities, because Russia was a key supplier uh, in, in, uh, of wheat, metals. metals, aluminium and palladium and so many others, you know. So if, if Europe and U.S. embark on a journey to isolate Russia uh, in economic terms, that could have uh, uh, repercussions for their own economies, but more importantly for uh, uh, developing countries uh, which have an export base, which is commodity. Do buy directly from Russia or from the market? I mean, Russia supply to the open market and we purchase it from there? Or? Yes. So, so either way. Either way, even if you buy directly or if you buy from a third party or a wholesale market arrangement, for example, for metals, uh, in any case, the prices would increase. Uh, but the key question is whether Russia uh, would still be willing to supply at increased prices. If it takes a position that I don't want to supply, for example, uh, even at increased prices, what happens? Many of the industries in the lower income countries or developing countries shut down. But Pakistan can, just it's on the tangent, it's not with the discussion. I just put a short question and short and then we'll go. Do you think Russia can directly, would be willing to, of late, Russia is a beloved? Yes, of course. And Russia, according to the information that we have, uh, Russia has offered gas and wheat supplies apart from many other uh, items of co cooperation which were of course uh, discussed uh, with Russia and uh, uh, to just to take this point a step further, yeah, okay. uh, they are not even uh, uh, the, the, the kind of arrangement for gas or wheat or other essential items that they have offered 
is uh, more uh, sort of synonymous to uh, deferred payment like facility that Pakistan had, which sort of eases your short term balance. So we have problems. so we have two risks which are looming large on the horizon. One is the international behavior of prices, especially the energy prices, and the second is the fiscal performance home. Are you saying that? Yes, that's right. These are two, two which Absolutely. which are which are which are tagged to this relief package yeah. which has been given. Yes. Now come to the fiscal side. How robust is the fiscal side that it will? I mean, if the two billions are here, then obviously, and the spike continues, then it will offset the loss to a very large extent. Very important question. I think a robustness of the fiscal side at least on in case of taxation uh, i'm fairly confident that the government has taken measures uh, fbr has a new team in place which has been able to demonstrate uh, uh, its progress yes and 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 uh, crossing past well past their targets you know uh, so that's very good and coming out of covid of course uh, now that the economy is projected to grow somewhere around 4.85% this year uh, of course, there will be revenue gains, further revenue gains for FBR, you know. So on the taxation <coughs> side, this means that, uh, of course, there is some, some, some certainty. It is actually the expenditure side of the government about which I would be uh, a little uh, sort of uh, concerned, if I can say. And that's because going into an election year, there could be a tendency for expansionary fiscal policy, which could really uh, jeopardize the... Uh, the, the, the gains, the reforms, which this government themselves had really uh, taken uh, since 2018. <coughs> so one really hopes that uh, they don't embark on that way. We have seen the past two governments do that in their final year or in the run-up to their elections. One just hopes that some, uh, f some, some elements of fiscal discipline, at least on the expenditure side, are maintained. Uh, what are you act actually saying? Are you saying that in the name of development, cash would be given to the elected representative or you are saying that uh, the fiscal discipline would be somehow… A I mix of said, both, uh, Tahir Saab. You have seen that uh, PTI seems under pressure to oblige and you have seen SAS stipend amount increase. Uh, you have seen that stipend amount for, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 tax policy for self-employed and freelancers has just been changed, uh, despite the fact that in the sixth review there was a different uh, understanding with the fund. Uh, we also see that uh, uh, industrial package talks about further tax breaks, you know. So all these are pointing towards uh, government trying to sort of come closer to their stakeholders, voters, citizens at large, or potential voters for 2023. And this will certainly have implications. Last question, what is the relationship with the IMF? Because IMF basically is bothered about your fiscal framework. And, uh, but they might, we might have agreed with them on certain May arrangement that how this fiscal prudence or the fiscal performance we are going to put forward. For example, on prices, taxing energy or I mean different mod. So definitely in the energy prices and all that, do you think they have a word with the IMF before going to announce? Well, I am of or course they did not. yeah I am of course not privy uh, to 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 this uh, arrangement, but my hunch is that uh, they didn't have a word because of course there's a lot of urgency to announce the package. Uh, of course, there was pressure in the parliament. There was pressure on the roads from the opposition. You know, uh, there were talks about long march. So the government seemed in a bit of haste to announce something which resonates with the people. Going forward, Tahir Sab, I, I think uh, IMF will not disengage. IMF does not disengage unless you disengage. Uh, that's how they operate. But they differ. But, but yeah, but uh, the seventh review or the reviews afterwards could, could, could be much when more When is seventh uh, due? Seventh uh, is next due. quarter, basically. Next quarter. Yes. So, 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 so that could, uh, you could, you could fit, face a lot of difficulties. Last, last quarter of the fiscal year. Yes.
Yes, that's right. So that yeah. is very critical. It is. Because you need to, uh, I mean, base your next budget. The demands must have been coming from the ministries and some. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is. Last question. I mean, that was the second last, last question. What should government do? That there is a fiscal space which has been utilized. Now there is a liquidity with the public. I mean, the liquidity is definitely going to increase. What should government do that it should be utilized in a productive way without causing inflation? Last question, as what is your expert? What would you do that now it has all been done and now you don't want it to be consumed in inflation that private parties uh, pile up the profit because of the inflation, because it's a monetary expansion sort of a thing. If not monetary expansion, but the availability of money, the liquidity available to the last at the retail place, what should you do that it become productive and post in result and show up in revenue and industrial growth? Yes, I think it's easier for me to say, given that I don't have uh, uh, any political pressures, so to say. But one would go back to uh, the, 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 the things decided as per the book. So the, the, the IMF review, the report which has come out, provides you a very decent roadmap going forward and the government has given that roadmap. I would just like the government to stick to that roadmap. Unfortunately, within a month's time of uh, our, 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 our passing of the sixth review, we have deviated from that book. By this, by this yes. package? Yes. Okay, all right. So obviously the discussion is very clear. I don't think so. We need to summarize all that. It is a digress. And uh, the hope is that international uh, commodity prices, especially the energy prices, behave well. And uh, on the fiscal side, the performance, the spike that the FBR is showing should continue. With this, we come to the end of the program. Next time, we'll bring more discussion on very sensitive, all, I mean, these importance issues. Please like and subscribe. And if possible, please comment by logging in to the site so we can uh, improve our program in the light of what you want. Goodbye.